Yo, what's poppin' guys? It's your boy Crooks the Great back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 4 video. And today we're gonna be using Nate Diaz in the welterweight division. Now, of course, you guys know I'm from Stockton, so this is a native guy to me. Uh, I've known about him since I was damn near a little kid, him and his brother Nick Diaz. So these videos are always super special to me. We're gonna be going up against the recently buffed Gilbert Burns here in this first matchup. Now, I wanted to make this video because there has been rumbles of Nate Diaz coming back to fight at 170. So, he is at 170 in UFC 4, so I figured, you know what, we'll bring him back in the welterweight division. So, in this matchup here, we don't really want to be fighting too much in the pocket with Nate. Uh, he does have an incredibly fast 1-2, uh, but we don't want to be cracking those inside the pocket. We want to try to stay out at distance and work the nice boxing of Nate Diaz staying out at the range like that right there but we're putting a little bit of pressure on Gilbert but a nice jab straight right there by my opponent just trying to stay patient with it Nate is very very durable in this game but if you kind of get a good health lead on him it's very very tough for him to come back so we just want to be careful of how much damage we're really taking so we catch him with a nice three piece we're not really rushing. You don't see me just launching combinations at him with Nate Diaz. We're trying to time out strikes well as we broke through the block right there. We're trying to push him up against that fence and we're working the nice body hooks right there. He's circling off nicely. We almost pull countered him. But you see me working the nice body hooks of Nate as well. That's one thing if you're going to be using either one of the Diaz brothers, you have to do. You have to go down to the body and really chip away at anybody and everybody's cardio. Because these guys are cardio freaks in real life. And they are in the game as well. If you can get a nice stamina lead over somebody. So here we're just pressuring. Miss on that third strike right there. He's trying to fire back. And he's trying to catch us walking in with a nice combination like what he did right there. We retreat. We back up to let the block reset. Double jabbing into the pocket right there. Oh man, excuse me, but we got a nice rock off. Have him up against the fence. We try to hurt him, but he circled off laterally. Very, very good stuff, but we're still on the hunt. We clinch him up and try to push him up against the fence right here. Hit him with a good knee to the body just to chip away at that body health. And we can use the clinch of Nate Diaz as well because he's very, very good inside the clinch in real life. So we're able to hit that pull counter straight rip down to the body. This guy did block twice. But we still mixed him up right there. We're going to let him get back there, up to his feet because we don't want to really deal with Gilbert Burns on the ground. He has high level jujitsu. So we hit him with a good, nice jab straight. Still having him trapped up against the fence. Still trying to time out that knockout combination. But he's circling off. Catch him with a good slip straight as he try to go for a jab. Knock him down with a good lead hook right there. Now we have him in a ground and pound scenario. We're going for the nice ground and pound dub and we're able to get it right there with Nate Diaz. And he by far has the best after fight celebrations in the game. They're the most realistic. He has two signature celebrations as you see the first one right here. He's walking up to the camera. But we did get the nice easy dub there with uh, Nate Diaz in the matchup against Gilbert Burns. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the second fight that I do have for you guys here on the video. Now here we are guys. We are going up against Nick Diaz, a little brother on brother violence in this one here. And we're going up against Pac Talk. Well, no, if you guys watch my past videos, Pac Talk, this this guy is known as a spammer. Um, luckily for and unluckily, he's using Nick Diaz, so I don't think he's gonna try to clinch spam me like he was in the Aljo video that uh or the Sean O'Malley video that I made. <clears throat> but you never know. So here in this matchup, it's a little bit different. Even though these guys are brothers, uh, their animations in the game are completely different. Nate uh, throws a little more lanky uh, strikes than Nick. Nick's a little more straight. So he can fight inside the pocket way better than Nate in the game. So we don't want to be pocket fighting. We want to be trying to crack off good combinations from the outside. And we want to try to be working the body as well. So we broke through the block. Nice four-piece into the block right there by him. Tries to hit us with the elbow. We double jab in response. We're just taking our time, trying to get a good read on what he's doing. 
because I know that Nick Diaz does have that spinning, that broken spinning heel kick to the head. So we want to be aware of that at all times. Because like I said, this guy Pack Talk is really, really freaking cheesy. <clears throat> so we're just trying to really take our time. Working the body. Throwing out the nice one-twos of Nate. Trying to time out a good, solid, clean combination. Maybe interrupt him as he's trying to start off a combo. It's taking our time. He's moving off now. We accidentally shoot for a takedown right there. I didn't mean to do that. Now, we're in a pretty bad spot because this is where Pac Talk really wants to be at as he hits the turning takedown from back, side, or from back uh, control right there. We're able to regain our full guard here. This is where we feel comfortable at. We don't want to let him get off too much damage. But we are in our full guard, so we do have rubber guard. So we are able to successfully hit the back sitting because he did fake a transition. We're going to get back to our feet because this is where I know he doesn't want to be at. This is where I feel most comfortable in this matchup. So here we're just starting to apply a little bit of pressure. Still working the nice body hooks. Looking for the slip straight. Just taking our time. Breaking down that block. Just chipping away at it. Trying to get a good read for what he's doing. And it looks like he's not going to so much grapple spam us this time. Uh, it just looks like he's going to play off of his back foot. So that means we're going to be aggr and the aggressor for most of the fight. So we just really want to take our time and not walk into any stationary combinations. So there he's trying to press forward. Just trying to maintain our composure, not really trying to rush anything. Hit him right there with a nicely timed straight. He ducks underneath the hook, and then he tries to taunt me. Acting like I haven't put him out in the past. So that even motivated me even more. So we taunt him back because he completely whiffed on those strikes. And he stopped and slapped me. All right. All right. I see the way it's going to be. I see the way it's going to be. Catch him with a nice slip straight. He's ducking. That lets me know he's going to get hit with the uppercut at some point. And that's the end of the first round. Pretty close first round. He did get the he did get the takedown, but we did land the more solid uh, connections. And we landed the more solid combinations. So now that we got a read for what he's going to try to do, we're going to try to execute the game plan, which is to fight him from the outside not walk into any stationary combinations and try to avoid getting ourselves trapped up against the fence where he can potentially go for one of those broken rear naked chokes out of back sitting or to try to get us in backside at all. So at the beginning of the second round, he's still backing up. He's trying to work the body now, so we need to be aware of that as well. We're keeping it calm. Hit him with a nice slip straight. Hit him with some a couple good body shots. He whiffs on those two strikes. We immediately apply the pressure. Catch him with a nice jab hook. Feigning off the straight. And now he's starting to throw those uh, those teep kicks to the body and the side kicks. So we can potentially get a nice minor step counter off of those. So we're going to be looking for that as well. So we're just staying patient, trying to read it out. There was going to come out another teep kick. But we interrupted it. Try to pull counter him. But now you see our pressure has increased dramatically from the first round. We're not backing up as much. We're kind of launching off single strike attacks just to try to set ourselves up for a combination. There he hit us with a good, nice lead hook. Goes down to the body. Double jabbing into a straight. Breaks the block down. There was the first knee. Try to go with double body hooks, but only one landed. So now we're starting to land a little bit more. And we don't really have to worry too much about the cardio. Like I said in the last fight, Nate and Nick both have very, very good cardio. And they're both very, very durable. So this fight might go into the later rounds. So we just want to watch for uh, how much damage we're really taking to the head. So he's trying to mix it up. Head, body. We do the same in return. Jabbing. Shoot for a takedown. And we're able to get it right there. Now, we are in top control this time, but we still need to be aware of the ground game. So we go ahead and get back up to our feet because Nick does have rubber guard as well. So we don't really want to be in that position that we were in. But now we're applying a lot of pressure and we're able to get the takedown again. And we're going to be looking to advance to a different position there. He's going to hit the sweep, but that's OK because we are better off the back than we are on top. So we try to go for rubber guard, but he postures up. He's going to try to be mixing us up. 
We're trying to hit the get up and we're not going to get the transition quite yet. Just taking our time here. We're able to get him in rubber guard. Now, this is very, very troublesome for if you get trapped in it because we did deny that first transition. We're working the elbows in the rubber guard. He went the same way again, so we denied it again. We're going to go ahead and punish him while we're getting top control. If you have rubber guard, you do get uh, control time. So we're going to try to maintain this as much as possible while damaging his head. He's faking off those transitions. And he's finally going to be able to get out of the rubber guard, but not before. We got about a good solid 20 seconds of control. He's going to try to posture up and rain down some ground and pound strikes to try to get some of those points back. But we were able to get back to our feet as the second round ends. He's going to be thinking twice about being in our full guard if he does get us to the ground. But a very, very solid second round. We're able to fight the kind of fight that we really want. We're able to land some good body shots. We're chipping away at that stamina. We're able to land some good head strikes as well. As well as getting all of that damage in rubber guard. So going into this third round, we're going to try to maintain the same amount of pressure. And if we get taken down, we want to put him back in the rubber guard scenario because he can't really get out. So if it works for us, it works for us. So here we don't touch gloves. We're back underway. He hits us with a nice two-piece to start off the round. Now he's fainting off strikes. There's another cheap kick. Popping off the jab straight just in case he tries to enter in the pocket. Just taking our time. Not rushing anything. Patience is the key to winning these type of matchups. Now we're unloading on his block just a little bit. Going jab body. Catch him with a nice clean uppercut. Hit him with a good slip straight as he went for the calf kick. And now I could sense him starting to break just a little bit. We're not really trying to rush anything. But we are starting to break his will just a little bit. Because now he's starting to slip a lot more. And we're landing at a heavy, heavy pace. Ripping down to the body still. Not just head hunting. Catching him with a nice jab straight to the body. Breaking down that block right there. Nice teep kick. Kind of stopped us in our tracks. Not too much though. Trying to launch off a vicious body attack, but we actually missed right there. Just taking our time, not really rushing anything. There's a nice three-piece, but we return right there with a nice three-piece of our own. And now you can just see that his output is starting to slow down, and we're starting to just get... Turn this fight really into our favor. The boxing is starting to take over. We're starting to mix it up nicely. He doesn't really know what to do as he tried to go for a slip uppercut. We hurt him with a nice slip straight. Launching the body attack. There it is. Nice two-piece. Going body-body. Breaking that block down. Looking for the upper uppercut to come out. Now he's launching off some attacks. Not too much. We got him in a very, very good spot as we catch him with a nice rear hook. Walking him down at this point. He's trying to launch back. We're not really too concerned about it at this point. Still looking for that slip straight. Pressuring the hell out of him with Nate Diaz. Using that nice jab. He's still trying to go for the slipping uppercut and the elbows. But those ain't going to work this late in the fight. Missed on the combination, but it is what it is. Just walking him down. Catching him with that nice jab straight. And now he's trying to move off laterally. So I'll give him credit for that. But, I mean, overall, just putting a beating on this guy is really what I wanted to do. Because he talks so much crap about me outside of, uh, of us playing that I just wanted to, you know, just slowly but surely beat him down. As we catch him with a good slip straight, go to the body twice, hurt him, and then get that clean body KO with the rear body uppercut into lead body hook. Got us the dub right there with Nate Diaz. But that's the last fight that I do have for you guys here on the video. If you guys did enjoy this video and you guys are new to the channel, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. I do post UFC 4 content on this channel daily as well as stream UFC 4 where I give tips and tricks on how to be a better player. But until the next video, guys, take it easy. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your guys' day, afternoon, evening, depending on where you're watching this from. And I will see you guys in the next one.